I, I want to talk about stormy weather because this has been, in my lifetime, one of the stormiest seasons, I think, that I have seen collectively for our country. And, but then the Lord said, I said to the Lord, well, Lord, that's negative. And then the Spirit of God came and said to me in Psalm 91, he shall cover thee with his feathers, even in stormy weather. So that's the message today. The enemy sought to rob us of Jesus' peace all year. He worked and worked and worked. But, you know, we're still here. We still have the peace of Jesus that passes all understanding. And so it, it's unusual to, to not, it's usual sometimes for us to dwell in the negative when God wants us to dwell in the positive, the good, the word, the power, the strength, the trinity that lives in us. So no doubt sometimes we may feel that uh, we, were, we are in a storm all by ourselves. You ever feel that way? You look around you and you see the good things happening for people and then you feel that you're in a storm. But you're never in a storm. I love the bulletin uh, cover that Nancy gave me. It looks like there's just one there or maybe two in the distance within the boat. But Jesus is there. And that is a picture that needs to be so powerful in our life that we will recognize that we are never alone, but that he is always in the stormy weather with us. So, you know, he, he gave his angels charge over us. He covered us with his precious feathers. And we have arrived to face a new year in just a few short days. So as, as I walked through the sanctuary a few days ago, a few Tuesdays ago, I heard the prayer team praying Psalm 91. And I thought, how precious it is to be a small church like us and to have a prayer covering like we have in the house. And that's probably why our doors stay open and why the tithe has kept us financially safe through all this crisis. You know, that a pr prayer is a covering and it's a help in the time of trouble and it's also a release. You know, sometimes people get in an argument or something goes awry and so you have a little tiff and you kind of feel a little better after it because you said your piece, you know. But the thing of it is, is if you pray and you talk it over with God, it gives a, it gives a much more calm, assured peace than if you're having it with your friend or your parent or your, you know, offspring. So I just want to encourage you today that to, to recognize that as a church, we do have a prayer covering. And it is what's really formulated the message for today that because prayer... Prayer goes up in this house for the church. Prayer goes up in this house for your families. And prayer goes up in this house for our government and for our ministers and for our inmates. I thank you for your patience with all those that are coming to graduate. We have three or four in line that want to come. And, you know, I tell them, I say, well, you know, we're just a fall, small church. The, the brothers that were just here that came such a distance, I said, well, you know, it was only going to be 10 or 12. I do all the discouraging I can do. <laughs> and they don't care. They come bounding anyhow, and they go away, and they write me letters, and they say they felt the presence of God, and it was so important for them to be in your house, in this house. And so I'm thanking you for your patience with all that. When that happens, nobody's ever griped, so I know that you're just a real patient people, and thank you for that. But I know that the church will survive the stormy weather. And, and how do I know that? Because God is more powerful than the works of darkness. And if we as a church will remain positive and remain strong in the power and the presence of the Lord and have a good thought life, then God's presence will remain with us and camp around about us, as the prayer says in Psalm 91. So, but there are some re requirements for God to do that in this house. And as you know, most of you that are in the prayer team, you quite quote the scripture regularly. But, you know, we must dwell. Psalm 91, we must dwell in the secret place of the Most High. What is the secret place? The secret place, this is not the secret place because we all see each other. We know what's going on. The secret place is where nobody knows. The secret place is where you bow your knee and your heart before God and then you commit to him in ways that you would never speak because you commit to him because you trust him and he's a faithful God. So he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, as we close out this year, I want to challenge you to make it a point in the year ahead to be more mindful of dwelling in a secret place with God. 
I mean, just maybe someday when you're getting in your closet to get your coat out, just shut, just shut yourself in the door and say, Lord, I want to dwell in a secret place with you. And just see how it feels to know that it's just you and maybe that coat that's touching you is the presence of God that's in that place with you. And you just say to him, I want to dwell. So all this week I've been saying that to the Lord. I want to dwell in, your, in the secret place, you know. And, and sometimes I think I might be touching down and then sometimes I think, where are you, Lord? How have I strayed? You know, but God, he loves us and he draws us with his presence. So first, I want to encourage you this next in the new year to dwell in the secret place of the Most High and remember that there is a shadow of the Almighty. Sometimes we think the word shadow is negative. We used to sing this uh, song, uh, Jesus in the shadow. He's, what, what, how's that go? Somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. And somebody came to me, this is a long time ago in our church, and they said, why are we dwelling in the shadows? Jesus isn't in the shadows. And I go like, uh, he's not there, we're there. <laughs> he's not there, we're there. And uh, so re remember that when the enemy wants to bring a shadow over your life, some negative thing, some painful thing, some d distant thing that uh, hurts your feelings or hurts you where, where you live, just remember that we can dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's not negative. That's powerful. And then the second thing uh, is to confess Jesus more than you confess the crisis. Amen. I'll say that again. Confess the word of God more than you confess the crisis. It's so easy to confess the crisis. It's just so easy. But let us confess the word of God. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He is not a failure. God is not a failure. And begin to confess the power of God in our life more than the crisis. Yes, we have crisis. But God is more powerful than the crisis. So the first thing is to dwell in that secret place. The second thing is, verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And I know that you saints uh, quote that a lot, and it's probably not very um, uh, um, knowledgeable in your mind. But that's what we have to do. We confess that he's our refuge. Confess that he's our high tower, which means he'll get, he will get us out of it. And confess that he's our refuge in this instead of confessing the crisis. And you know, here's the simple confession that, that distills the presence of God. And that is, oh, I have a sniffle. I might get a cold. You know, and that's what happens. Or what does this mean if I don't feel too good? Do, do I have this thing? You know, but confess that he is our refuge. In the midst of the storm, we may have a storm. We may have stormy weather in the year ahead, but he is still our refuge, and he is our help in the time of trouble. So the stormy weather has been since the beginning of time, church. For, since Genesis, right back in Genesis, the storm began. And the storm has wandered all through the Old Testament, the wars, the rumors of wars, the failures. And we get into the New Testament, same thing. Jesus knew from the foundation of the world that he would go through a stormy weather on, the, on Calvary's hill. But you know what? He confessed his father's will. He said, I do whatever the father tells me to do. If the father tells me to go to the cross, then I will do it. And sometimes we have these challenges in our life that we need to be able to say that if this is a challenge from God, I receive it, I'm going to go through it because he's my refuge. And I'm going to find him in the secret place where I can't say anything to anybody else, but I can say it to him. And I'm going to find him there. You read the Old Testament, you can see that they pleaded for the gift of salvation. Isaiah wrote it. They talked about the virgin birth. They talked about all those things. They, they wanted to have salvation. We're on the other side of that. We have salvation. We have Christ. We have his shed blood. So, you know, it's our flesh that we have to conquer. It's our flesh that holds us down. And we can't get rid of our flesh unless we want to go to heaven. So the flesh is with us and we have to rule it. And the Spirit of God has to live in us so powerful that it will rule our flesh. Stormy weather. 
the Israelites stood on the raging sea in front of them. The enemy was forging as fast as it could right against him. And they stood there and had nowhere to go. Do you ever feel that way? That you're in a stormy season and there's just no hope. There's no way to go. The, everything rages against you. And they stood there in the Old Testament. They, they stood there not, not knowing anything. You know, but God covered them. God brought them forth unhurt. He brought them through a stormy sea. He brought them through a, a raging a, a waves of water and dried the sea. And they walked over, not in mud. Not in, not in the deep feet, uh, d- deep feet of sand, but they walked on dry land through the storm. And church, that's what God's requiring of his people today, that we will be able to forge through the storm on dry ground, knowing that our strength is in God and not in anything that we can do. So the closer that the enemy came, and you know, sometimes the enemy feels like he's coming close to us. But let me tell you something, you know, Over and over and over, the Israelites failed. Over and over and over, God showed them miracles. And over and over, they failed. But you know what? God never gave up on them. He has not given up on them today. He brought brought the the, uh, capital of Jerusalem to the right place. He has not given up on them. The whole world at times is against them. And they're so small you know, in the scope of things. And God keeps his care over them. And that's so important. God has never given up on them. So sometimes when we think, well, I failed God and maybe he's given up on me, he never, ever gives up on us. The message today is just to say that stormy weather causes us to acknowledge that we have a shield and a buckler, a refuge, and a faithful God. If you will never know he's faithful if you don't find yourself in a storm. But if you find yourself in a storm and then you find yourself through it, you know that he is a faithful God. And we have, everyone here can attest to the storms that we've gone through in our lifetime, especially if you've lived past 50, you've had a few storms, you know, but God has been faithful, hasn't he? And we need to remember those things. We don't need to remember them to cry about them, but we need to remember them to see the faithfulness of God. So, I, I read this and I said, stormy weather. And God said, and it, I'll cover you with my feathers. So I like to, I, I wanted to research that out. What does that mean? You know, and I found many uh, spiritual stories. This is interesting about the powerful covering of the feathers. And uh, there's very many, uh, I wish we had time. I would have gotten some of those books of the testimonies of the feathers of God. But they talk about that, uh, you know, we have angels that cover us and walk with us. And there's uh, testimonies how God had met people in a crisis and they, and then there, they find a feather somewhere. And, and they, they testify that God spoke to them and said, I was there, you know, and I, it was, it was just so interesting to think about that. And then I remembered, and I probably told you this before, but you know, after 80, you can repeat yourself. So it's okay. But I have, a, I have a family experience of feathers. And for brevity's sake, I would tell you that Julie was in Russia. And it was before that they were open to Christian materials. And she had a suitcase of clothes and a suitcase of Christian materials. You know, we're handmaidens and Sister Gwen always telling us, go and do it. You know, God will be with you. And we get ourselves into predicaments because of all that. But... God never fails in his faith. And so they were going in the line and all the suitcases were going by and they were just really, the, the, the people that were the Russian people, they are just throwing things out of the suitcases and just going through everything. And I can, I can see Julie standing there saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and um, so, so her, her suitcase, she had one suitcase of clothes and one suitcase of materials. And so her suitcase of clothes went by, and they just passed by it. And the suitcase of, of all of the tracts, the Bibles, the, the books, the Sister Gwen's books and stuff, all was coming up to, the, to be, go through the scope. And, and then it just passed right through, and she looked, and there was, you could see nothing but, but clothes. And when she got to the motel room and opened the suitcase, she had put her feather pillow on top of the stuff. 
And God protected all of that religious material by his feathers. That is awesome. And Phyllis, Phyllis gave her a passport when she left, and the passport was Psalm 91. So Julie always travels with her pillow. But, you know, you don't always have a feather pillow. You know, I don't have a feather pillow. But she has a feather pillow. And, you know, this is, this is interesting. You know, God does special things. That's not written in the Bible, except that he said he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings. She still has that, you know. had given me that and I opened it up and I stuck it in my passport and it fit perfectly inside. Nothing was hanging out, it just fit perfectly inside. And she said to me when she gave it to me, this is your spiritual passport. So I thought I'm gonna stick it with my regular passport. And it was just amazing how she didn't know how to fold it, she just folded it. Like the Holy Spirit just let it made it fit it and it fit. Yeah, well, I was reading those testimonies, and I just got, I just got, you know, all blessed to see that. So I'm expecting to see a feather any moment. So when you see a feather, don't think, oh, that some bird flew by. Just go, oh, well, the angel was close by. I don't, I don't even know if angels have feathers, but anyhow, the the Lord says He'll cover us with His feathers. So if there's stormy weather, there's a refuge under the wings of our Lord Jesus. And, and I just think that we need to be reminded about that. In my explanation, you know, I always like to find, uh, go to the dictionary and look at these things. And I, I was looking up feathers, and this is very precious. It, this is one of the many explanations. It says, to touch someone very lightly. To touch someone very lightly. To be touched lightly by God is to experiencing um, to experience a most powerful touch you know and I want to be touched like that and I want this new year to have those touches of the lightness of God that I experience his 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 being near me and to know that in the crisis and in the stormy weather and all of the broken laws of our country you know and all the evil and the corruptedness that's going on there is still a safe place in him because he's our refuge and the passage that I looked at it says to be touched lightly by God is to experience a powerful touch Psalm 91, 4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Well, this is a very short passage of strength that we can look at. To look at. It says, He is our uh, shield and buckler. So, you know, we read over those words when we read the scriptures. We probably all read through it. I wanted to know, well, what is a shield and what is a buckler? Well, the shield is a shield of faith that you hold up and protects their body. But as I researched out a buckler, a buckler is something that's different than a shield. It is a shield, but it's a shield for defense. And it has an umbo, don't know what that is, but that's what, it, that's what the dictionary said. It has an umbo in the middle of it. And that is there, it's a shield to protect from the darts of the enemy and the stones and the hard things that are thrown against it. And the buckler is the full length of the body. Now, isn't that revelatory? It's more than a shield. A shield is here. A buckler is every part of us. And he says, I am, he, he is our shield and our buckler and he is our truth. And church, I think that's something that we need to learn more about is his truth. His truth is that he will protect us, that he will keep us in the time of trouble, that he is our refuge, he is our shield, he is those things that protects us. We don't even know what he's protected us from, but someday we'll stand in his presence and he'll say, you remember that? I protected you from that. And we won't even know it or recall it because the power of his presence was there and he was a shield and a buckler and a refuge and a high tower. He got us out of things when we would, couldn't have got him out ourselves. A buckler is the type of a shield that is a defense mechanism. 
God has given us a defense mechanism. And if there's such a thing as an umba, I'm sure it's the power of the Holy Ghost in the center of our body, watching over us and taking care of us and shielding us from the storms and the, and the stones and the rocks and the darts of the enemy. Because God is our refuge, you know, and Jesus suffered the cross. He suffered the stones. He suffered all of those things. And all the time in eternity before this happened, he knew it was going to happen. He knew that he was going to be obedient to his father. He knew those things. But he also knew that his father was faithful. And in this year that lies ahead of us, we have to remember that our father is faithful. Our father is faithful. One thing the enemy has done is he has, he has wedged a war against the natural fathers of our nation. The natural fathers. There are so many children that don't have fathers. So many things like that's going on. And that's the work of the enemy because God is our father. And our fathers are to be the fleshly example of God who is a heavenly father. We need to pray for our children that are large in our country without the, without the guidance of a father. And that they might come to know the true father, God. Because so many of them are bitter against fathers that they cannot find God the father because they have suffered such uh, torment, tormentous things. So I want us to have some things to think about in this time. And make mo no mistake that in this new year, we will have an awesome opportunity to trust God. We'll have many opportunities to withstand the storms and many opportunities to experience the feathers of God and his wings covering us. It's important, church. Consider Jesus, how long his day must have been as he waited and suffered, knowing that the Calvary was ahead of him. But you know what? The end of Calvary was so awesome. Not only did he save us, he saved all humanity that will come to him. So the end of our stormy weather will bring great, great grace in our life. And we need to remember that. We need to be able to overrule our flesh and not fear the midst of the storm that comes, but to know that he is with us in our, sh in our ship. In the, in the New Testament, we get down to uh, Mark 4 and Luke 8. You know, this is very, very knowledgeable to you. It's the storm that Jesus got into with his disciples. And he was worn out. He, he had fed the thousands. He had healed the sick. He had done multitudes of miracles in front of them. And he said they were in the ship and he pushed away and he said, let's go to the other side. And you know the story and they head out into the storm. Jesus is weary. He's tired. He lays down because how many know he's in the flesh? So his flesh is tired and he goes to sleep in the boat. You know, and all of a sudden the storm comes. That's when the enemy wants to rage the most about us is when we feel calm when we feel, you know, just everything is good, then all of a sudden the enemy starts his harassment. And so while Jesus is sleeping, the storm comes and uh, the flesh overwhelmed them. Instead of saying, Jesus is with us, we're safe. They said, Master, Master, do you not see that we perish? Because the boat was filling up with water, the waves was upon them. I, the picture on the bulletin is probably just like it was. And, and, and instead of saying, well, Jesus is with us. Jesus, thank you. Help us, you know. No, they said, Master, Master, do you care that we perish? And how often, I, I bet Dr. Gorn has heard that many times in her counseling chamber. I have heard it in the ministry many times. Well, why is God letting this happen to me? Why, if he's a good God, then why does bad things happen? And on and on go those things. And that's exactly the spirit of the disciples. And there they are. They saw these things. We haven't seen 5,000 fed with two fish and two loaves of bread. We haven't seen that. However, maybe we have. Maybe we've gone through uh, financial situations and crisis. And today we're through it. God helped us, you know. But they saw these ma majestic miracles. And then now they're here in the midst of the storm and they don't even understand that they have the faithful Savior with them in the storm. And they cry out and they say, Master, Master, do you don't care that we perish? And saints, we have to be careful that we don't do that because he always cares. And yes, we have to go through stormy weather. But when we get through it, how good it feels to have waged the war and we are victorious. Amen. So they, you know, Jesus said to them these two striking statements. He goes, you know, how, how could you not have the faith? 
Oh, ye of little faith, how could you not do that? I never want to hear him say that to me, but I'm, I'm sure that I closed my ears to that many times when I was in struggles. But I, I thank God for the struggles because today has made me stronger, and it will make us stronger if we allow it to make us stronger. And the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 7, it says, you know, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. I think that should be our statement for the new year. Paste it on your mirror, paste it wherever you go, paste it on your table, paste it somewhere and see that God wants us to trust in him with all of our heart, not just part of our heart, not just when we're in church, but he wants us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, not lean on our own understanding. How many understands what's going on in our government? It's hard to understand that, isn't it? At least it's not what I believe. But lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways. That's the hard part. I can give some ways. But in all of our ways, it says, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. What does that mean? That means that he'll take us through the storm. If there's a stormy sea, he will take us through if we acknowledge him and we recognize who he is. And verse 7 there says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Most of us know the first part of that. Lean not on your own understanding. Second part is, don't be wise in thine own eyes. Think about that, church. How many times have we said our own thoughts? And how many times have we did planned our own way? And, you know, that's in our own eyes. We want to do what we want to do. But it says, you know, be not wise in your own eyes. For fear the Lord and depart from evil. You know, that, how do you depart from evil? By using his word. You, the word is your shield. It's your buckler. It's your sword. That when the bill comes and you say, oh my goodness, I did not know the, the bill was going to be this big this, this winter. You know, instead of starting to uh, take on the negative, you say, well, but my God shall supply the need. That's how you drive the evil out. Because the devil can't stay if you're quoting the word at him. So fear, fear God more than you fear the crisis. That's where we are today. How many know what I'm saying? Fear God more than you fear the crisis. Trust God more than you have lack trust in the crisis. One word from Jesus can calm the storm. He stood up and he rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the waves. And he said to the sea, peace, be still. And then he asked them, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? Stormy weather. Yes, but we have a refuge. God covers us under his wings and he enfolds us in his feathers with a light touch and we will experience his power in that light touch that he gives us. You know, David, I've always wondered this and I think I've probably said it a dozen times in this house, but why was David so special to God? And here's the Psalms 36, 7. Says, David says, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. You know, how often have we had the opportunity to put our trust under the shadow of God's wings? And instead of doing that, we leaned on our own understanding. We let our own eyes do its thing. And we missed what God wanted to do in our life. Psalm 36, 7, David, David loved God with a whole heart. And that's what God wants from all of us, is to love him with a whole heart. So I asked the Lord today, may he, ex he, may he experience our life with his soft touch until we feel the power of the Trinity within us because it lives in us. This is the reason David of old, you know, he, 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 he was a saint after God's own heart because he knew his weaknesses, he knew what he needed to do to be strong, and he knew, did the, he knew the power of God would always prevail in his life. Psalm 57, 1 and 2, we hear his voice, and he says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge 
until these calamities be overpassed. If there is ever a time that our world is in calamity, it's now. But here's hope, because it says the calamities will be overpassed. I will cry unto God the Most High, unto God that performeth all things for me. Church, if we ever start doubting that God can perform his will to us, then we are going to be a lost cause. We must not doubt. We must not fear. We must know that if we cry unto him, he will perform all things for us. So Isaiah, the prophet, gets into it as we come to a close this morning. Isaiah 25, 4 says, For thou hast been a strength in our distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. The wickedness of our day has broken God's laws, you know. But God is still a faithful God, and he still stands by his word. Nahum 1-2, I reached way over into the prophets, says the Lord revengeth, he says it twice, the Lord revengeth, he says the Lord is furious, the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Every time our country breaks a law, they're going to receive the vengeance of God. They don't need our vengeance. They need God's vengeance. And God says that the adversaries will pay their dues. And it's important that we remember that, that the end will be sorrowful for the wicked. God knows, he sees, he is our refuge. So, stormy weather, no doubt. But under his wings, you know, we can be better buried in his feathers. And there's safety. There's the covering of Jesus' blood. There's love. There's refuge. He's got the buckler across our whole life. And the shield and on and on go the promises of God. Stormy weather. I say to the church this morning, seize the moment and rest in Jesus' peace. And he will steal the storm. Father God, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that even in the stormy weather, you are there, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, and your word is always peace be still. Father, let our, str let our faith be strengthened in this year ahead, I pray. For this we give you glory and honor and power and praise. In Jesus' holy name we ask it.